Hi, I'm Kat, and today I'm doing this collaboration video for you guys with four other YouTube artists that you probably already watch and recognize and know. And if not, please feel free to visit their channels and subscribe. First up is Blue and Wonderwood, who made this Bababadook clay sculpt. DRN Design made these bloody eyeballs. Kraken Make Ruckus made this Samara coming out of her well and a miniature VCR and VHS tape. And finally, Everything Fimo made this miniature graveyard complete with little hands coming out of their graves. I made a gothic style clawfoot tub filled with blood. And I hope you guys enjoy the video. So please, don't forget to look at my video, as well as everyone else's videos, and like, comment, and subscribe for everyone. Thank you so much, guys. I very much appreciate you. And now, on to our tutorial. This is one that you guys like, one that uses everyday household items. And in this case, all of these are things you can find in the grocery store, including this one and a half quart of ice cream. This is a cheap variety with an oval-shaped tub, and that's why I decided to go on ahead and use it. I went on ahead and designed a tub shape based upon some of the ones I looked at online. Some of them dip in on one side or extend upward on others. So they do different things and just feel free to look online and see what tub shape you like. Once you've found one that's suitable, you can go on ahead and draw a pattern on your tub and cut it out. I also cut off the bottom and the top rim. I preserve the top rim. I'll use that a little bit later in the video. Now, the ice cream tubs are already somewhat waterproofed because they're covered in wax on the outside and the inside. But just to give this a little extra protection, I'm going to go on ahead and use some silicone caulk. Now, this is caulk that you find in any um, home improvement store like a Home Depot or a Lowe's. And for this case, even in Walmart, they sell it in clear white almond formulations. So you can go and pick some up for there for less than $3. So I went on ahead and caulked the outside of my tub, the rim along the bottom, the inside, and the top. And then this is the top rim that I was preserved from before. I simply cut it off and as you can see it's just folded over waxed paper. But because I need a rim for my tub, I'm going to go in ahead and trace the curve of the tub that I cut out. Glue it in place using E6000 and when you get to that last little bit you can cut it off and push that in place. This will help it to look a lot more polished at the end. Then I'm going to go on ahead and use some additional caulk to secure the rim to the base. I took it outside and gave it a blast of white spray paint. And then inside, I gave it two coats of white indoor-outdoor paint. This will help protect it some from some of the water. Next, to design the claws for the claw feet. I made a small rectangle that was one inch by three quarters of an inch and I'm going to use this to draw my design inside. And if you look to the very very bottom in the left hand corner you can see I have a very small sketch of what I was going for. So I'm just going to repeat the same design up here. It's a skull wearing some sort of a, mm, a cap. 
and then of course the claws are directly underneath the teeth of the skull. Don't go too crazy trying to make this detailed. Um, a lot of it's going to get lost in the embossing. And again, you can look online for any sort of ideas. Then I cut my design out. And this is just regular copy paper and some regular scissors. And then once I had the design cut out, I used a piece of aluminum foil from a disposable cake pan. And I used a small jar or bottle to straighten it up, in this case nail polish. Use the small end of a ball tool to trace your design onto your aluminum. Then, using the larger end, you can put this aluminum on top of a small bit of padding and just go on ahead and push in with the larger end of the ball tool. In this case, the larger portions of the indents that I'm using first are the eye sockets and the nose, and those are pretty much the only things going inward, so I'm going to use this first. And then I'm going to turn the foil over for the rest of the sculpt. This way I could just add a little extra definition to the face by pushing outward on the foil on the opposite end. And there, your final results, I have four of these. I curved the little claw portion at the bottom to make it look more like a claw. And the rest of it I left fairly straight. Then I used some matchsticks and cut out half inch pieces. This is made so that it's going to line up between where the claw sits and the very top of the skull. This is made to line up where this cloth sits and the very top of the skull. Then I built a small frame using coffee stir sticks, the wooden ones. And I put the matchsticks at the bottom. Next I'm using some metallic paint. And this is just to give this a nice coating of silver. Now this is too shiny and although I normally like shiny things and I don't like to age things out too much, I wanted to age this one just slightly. So I'm going to use some of the gunmetal gray metallic paint and I'm going to go over this with a makeup sponge. Now as you can see a lot of the paint gets sucked up into the sponge so I had to do this process maybe three more times until I had the desired effect. And for a cheap and easy shower curtain, if you want to go with a white one, you can use any sort of um, vinyl tablecloth. These are the ones that are less than $1.50 to $1 at any Walmart or craft supply store and, or also any dollar store, of course. And if you don't have this or you do want to go with a clear shower curtain, you can always use the back of a gallon Ziploc bag. Same techniques, but I decided to go with white. And I went on ahead and just clipped this to a popsicle stick just to make it a little easier and to stabilize it. Now you can puncture this with an owl or anything pointy, um, but I personally found that a small hole punch stretched out vinyl as opposed to putting a solid hole in it. So I decided to use this flame method. And I'm just heating my ball tool and stamping it into the dots. And those dots are three and, quarter, three and a quarter inches apart each. My square of tablecloth, by the way, was seven by ten inches. And then I'm using a wire hanger, which I normally hate. So I had to go get this one from a neighbor. Thanks, Miss Brazzle. And I went on ahead and made a small oval with it. 
and then a, another wire hanger, a thinner one. This one was rusted through and through, and I just happened to look up and find it um, outside of my home near the trash. So I grabbed it, rust, and complete, rust complete, and took it in to craft with. Now I used a little bit of toothpick in between, some beads for my faucet, a toothpick um, tip cut off with the backwards end turned inward, and then a small piece of coffee stir stick as well as a skewer to add any additional details there. Use super glue to adhere the beads to adhere to use super glue to adhere the beads to the metal. And you may have to chase your beads around for a little bit. And then you can glue your wood or your other metal pieces to it as well. So in this case, so in this case, I'm using the wooden skewer for the output pipe of the dirty water and another piece of the hanger for the faucet for the bathtub. Glue those on top of your beads and you can add any other details you want as well at this time and then go through and paint this with some silver paint to match the rest of it. You can also rust this out by just adding a little bit of orange brown paint. Then I glued my skull claws in place. I used two sequins for the drainage pipe and for the overflow and just glue those in place. Now while your tub is officially waterproof at this point, I went on ahead and added an additional coating of silicone to it, of the silicone caulking to it, just to be safe. Then I wanted to paint some nice streaky bloody handprints on my shower curtain. So I'm using the small end of a ball tool to do this. You could use either a picture on Google Images or you can use the back, the front of your palm to look at as a guide. And then of course I use the pen to just kind of remove any sort of detailing or extra little pieces that look like fingerprints. Jump rings became my shower curtain rings. Just place those onto the side. Just place those in the holes of your shower curtain. And I painted a little white line across the top just to secure it a little bit more before threading that onto my oval shower hook. And finally, my blood water. And this, in this case, was just water, red food dye, and a tiny little brown bit of paint. I used a little bit of cornstarch in there to make it thicken and because it was thickened I did heat it up very slightly which is why it's fogging up the camera. But there, my blood bath. Ready to complete your next gory miniature scene. When you're finished, you can pour the water out and if you have a last coating of silicone on there, the inside surface will usually wipe nearly clean. Thanks so much for watching guys. And please don't forget to watch my friends videos as well. Everyone worked really hard on their collaboration videos and I so would love and admire this group. Thanks so much guys. Bye.